Right, no UFC today, so I'm going to rank from top tier all the way to 0 to 15% the chance that they could beat Alex Pereira in the light heavyweight division. So, I'm going to start off with Johnny Walker. In my humble opinion, 20 to 30. And I'm not going to say 0 to 15%. And the only reason I've said that is because he can mix up the grappling. Look what happened against Ayan Kutalabi. He tried to rush in and get the takedowns. He's able to reverse him and get a rear naked choke. But obviously, he's not going into the 40 to 50% category because his chin is unbelievably bad. I know he's gone on a win streak, but look at the guys he's fighting. Paul Craig, he can't really get a takedown. All he wants to do is pull guard. And the Magomed and Kalaev fight, well, that was just a disgrace. It should have been a DQ, in my opinion. And I think against Alex Pereira, he would get tested in the fight, on the feet. And as soon as that left hook lands onto Johnny Walker's chin, he's going out cold. Look what Jamal Hill did to him. People were saying he got turned into the Looney Tunes or something like that because of the way it was like so goofy, the way his body like flipped forwards and then it jumped back up into the air. I just can't see Johnny Walker winning that fight with that chin. Unbelievably bad. Right, the next fighter on the list, Anthony Smith. Him? You're going to say, how are you going to put Johnny Walker in 20 to 30, but then put Anthony Smith in 0 to 15? And I'll tell you why. And ignore that like light skin thing he's doing there. But the reason I'm saying 0 to 15 is he can't shoot for takedowns properly anymore. And he doesn't do it. Ever since that leg injury happened and opponents start to abuse their legs, he can't shoot for takedowns. I do believe he did beat Ryan Spann, but... If you can chop up the legs like Johnny Walker did to him, he'll become flat-footed and not know what to do and then start talking about the family nonsense. And against Alex Pereira, I don't think he'll be able to get a takedown on him. Although I do believe back in his prime, this fight would have been like maybe even a 40-50 because of the matchup. But I think now he doesn't shoot for takedowns. He'll look to strike on the feet, throwing loads of like fakes towards your opponent. And he doesn't do anything, like he doesn't do enough damage. Yeah, he did it to Ryan Spann, but if Alex Pereira hit him with that left hook like Ryan Spann did, he would have been out cold and Alex Pereira would have followed up properly instead of hugging him like Ryan Spann did. I had no idea why he did that when he could have just finished him on the ground. But I think he's fell off massively and he's coming towards the end of the career. So I think Alex Pereira would KO Anthony Smith if they fought. And I'm just going to let you know, I don't like doing trigger warnings and all that, but one of these will trigger you. And not this one I'm going to bring up now, but it will be the one after. So, Nikita Krylov. I'm making sure I click the right image here. I'm going to put him in the 40%, and I'll tell you why. His style is a perfect matchup for Alex Pereira. But you know what the issue is? Fight IQ. He has all the attributes to beat him with that grappling, the aggressive style of, look what he did against Paul Craig, comes out with the front kick, and Paul Craig goes for a double leg, but then he reverses it, gets on top of him. He could take him down, and once he gets him down, the fight will be pretty much over. I do not see a guy like Alex Pereira getting up because of how strong Nikita Krylov's ability on the ground is to scramble and then lock up a submission. But the reason, like I said a minute ago, is the fight IQ is a bit off at times, like that Paul Craig fight. Stand him up. Why are you on the ground with a guy like Paul Craig who is extremely dangerous off his back? One mistake, you miss like a cross on the ground, he'll wrap up that triangle choke. Look at Anchor Live. Winning that fight, one second left of the fight and that happens. And I think with Nikita Krylov again, rushing into the pocket, as good as it might seem, like to get a takedown, if you fail at getting that takedown, like you jump into the pocket, leave your chin up high, which you can do at times, you can get countered. And we saw against Ryan Spann early, he got caught with like a heavy jab. And if you rush in against Alex Pereira, you could see like a check hook come in or something like that where he gets knocked out cold. So I think his fight IQ would let him down in that fight but he does have the potential to do it because of that style of the heavy grappling. And once he gets you down, he's very good at scrambling on the ground to try and find that submission. Right, the next opponent, Israel Adesanya. And I'm talking about, by the way, not at middleweight, but at light heavyweight, 20 to 30. And you're gonna think that looks ridiculous. How are you putting Nikita Krylov? Remember, 
MMA math is not a thing. It does not work. But the thing about Israel Adesanya, and this is my hot take about the last two fights they had. I did have, if you want to combine the rounds, Alex Pereira was winning because I had it 2-2 in the first fight before the KO happened. And then in the fight after, I actually did have Alex Pereira winning that first round, looking like he was going to win that second round, especially attacking the legs. But then he was over-aggressive, got caught, and Israel Adesanya won. But the reason I'm putting him in 20-30 to 30 is I don't think he's going to be able to grapple him like he did in the first fight. Alex Pereira was a bit inexperienced. He's dealt with people like Jan Blachowicz on his back trying to get a rear naked choke. He was dealt with Yuri Prohaska. I mean, he's not really a grappler, but still something. And Israel Adesanya, I don't think he can come out there and do that. I think he's going to have to strike with him. And looking at how hesitant he looked against Sean Strickland, the guy who's not known for knocking people out or having extreme high levels of power, he's a volume striker doing the Philly shell, I think he'd be intimidated of Alex Pereira. Yeah, he knocked him out, a more depleted one, and Alex Pereira can be a bit chinny. But against Alex Pereira at 205, that is a massive difference in weight. He doesn't have to cut as much. He'll appear much bigger... And I could actually see him actually KOing Adesanya, especially after watching that fight with Sean Strickland. And I would want Israel Adesanya to win, it'd be nice, but in my opinion, I cannot see Adesanya winning that fight again, not at 205. Maybe at middleweight, if Alex Pereira is over-aggressive, but if he's over-aggressive in this division, which I don't think he would be, I still think he would KO Adesanya because of the power difference and the fatigue on Adesanya from fighting so many times a year. I can't see Adesanya winning that fight. And especially trying to fight on the back foot, throwing leg kicks, it will not work. Because Alex Pereira will march you down and use that jab. And all the punches he faced in the first fight, they're going to carry way more power because of not cutting as much weight. And he can have more water in him. So this fight for me now would be a KO at light heavyweight for Alex Pereira. Right, the next fighter. Magomed Ankalaev. I'm starting to think... Right, this is the one which might cause a bit of controversy. I'm thinking of putting him in either 60 to 70. Yeah, I'm going to leave him there for now. I'm going to tell you why. I worry about the leg kicks. As good as Magomed Ankalaev is, if you look at the finishes he gets, they're never really on the ground. A lot of the time, it's from using the kickboxing on the feet and then following up with punches after. But... You're not going to win a striking battle with Alex Pereira on the feet. You're going to have to bring it down to the ground. But when he brings it down to the ground, what's he going to do? Because he can't submit him because he has no BJJ ground. And he doesn't really ground and pound an opponent. Yeah, he did it to Anthony Smith, but he doesn't usually do it. And he did hold down Jan Blachowicz, but he did it in the later half of the fight. But what I worry about is, look at how bad Jan Blachowicz was able to damage the calf of Anka Lyev. If he is suffering badly like that, imagine what Alex Pereira does. Alex Pereira is known for when he kicks you, the fighter's game plan kind of goes out the bin and they start panicking and they can't really get their better shots off like the jab. Sometimes it will take the sting out of the punches and I think it would for Ankalaev. That's why I do think he could win that fight and I would pick him to beat Alex Pereira by using that grappling heavy game plan, but I would be scared he tries to test the striking on the feet and not shooting early and that's why I'm not putting him in top tier if he was a guy where he shoots an all the time early and looks to use a grappling I'd probably put him there but I'm scared if that leg kick happens you need your legs to shoot into takedowns if you have that thing eliminated early how are you going to do that so I think you'll win that fight but I would be a little bit scared of the leg kicks happening to him Right, the next fighter on the list. I can't tell who this is. Right, Alexander Rakic. I'm going to put him in the 50%, just above Nikita Krylov. And I'll tell you why. If they fought before that injury had happened, I'd probably put him in the 60%. Not only because of his striking threat, it's because of the grappling, which is actually quite underrated by him. He's very good at having that control time. Like, if he can get you down to the ground, you're going to struggle to get up for the rest of the round. Because if you hear the opponents talk about him, they'll say that he's very strong. And I agree, he is. Like, when he gets you down, you struggle. 
but it's all about when he can get you down because he can struggle. It can take him a while to get going with the takedowns. And you'll see with the boxing sometimes when he leaves the pocket from exchanges, sometimes that chin can be open to be getting countered. And that is not a good thing to have because against Alex Pereira, he can counter well. Look at that Yuri Prohaska steps back, hook into another hook, puts him down. If he catches Alexander Rakic, as good as I think his chin is, he can put him down because Alex Pereira has freak-like power. And Alexander Rakic, again, Jan Blahovic chewed up his legs as well and he weren't checking them. And that is why I think 50-50 fight, because I think if he can bring it down to the ground and then start to stay in like the half guard position, he'll be fine. Because Alex Pereira will struggle to deal with a guy like Alexander Rakic because of how strong he is when he's on top of you. So I don't think it'll be like a very technical thing with the ground. It will be about a strength thing. And Alex Pereira will try and use technique to get back up to his feet. But on the feet, he will chew up that leg. It will swell up. And I think even if Alexander Rakic tries to use the boxing, because another fighter, again, who can sometimes leave his chin up a little bit high when he's leaving the pocket, that can actually enable Alex Pereira to counter him and maybe drop him and hurt him. And a plus that knee injuries happen, so... If he can target that leg as well, it might reactivate an injury because of how powerful and unhuman-like Alex Pereira's kicks are. So, yeah. Right, Khalil Ruintree, in my opinion, overrated. I like him, he's very entertaining to watch, but I don't think he's as good as a lot of people say, so I am going to put him in 0 to 15 because that Muay Thai style works effectively, but we have seen fighters be able to run right through him. Like a guy like Alex Pereira, if he stands there in front of him, I think he can push Khalil Runtree against the fence and that's where he struggled. If you can back him up near the fence and not enable him to use any kicks, well, the game plan's not really going to work. And I know he can box, but he's more of a Muay Thai. He likes to kick. You see him do like madness things on the ground where he's booting the guy in the body, Carl Robson, I believe it was, when he's on the ground. Not a lot of fighters do that. He's very raw and explosive. But I do believe when he fought against Dustin Jacoby, that was a technical fight. And that's one of the biggest rubberies I saw last year. He should have lost that fight. He landed a few heavy leg kicks, but he was getting jabbed over and over and over and over again. And if that's Alex Pereira, he'll out jab him, but he'll have more of a sting on his punches than Dustin Jacoby. Like Dustin Jacoby actually got knocked out by Alex Pereira before, if you didn't know. And I think Khalil Roontree, he wouldn't have a chance against Alex Pereira. The only chance he could have is if Alex Pereira does the thing where he turns away from punches sometimes and he's backed up against the fence, then he might get caught. But I don't think he would in this type of fight. I think he'd be able to check the leg kicks because he's very good at doing that. And then Khalil Runtree will just be clueless and not know what to do, in my opinion. So, the next fighter, Ryan Spann. Again, a bit like Nikita Krylov, he has the attributes to do it, but Fight IQ lets him down. But I would favour Nikita Krylov's chances over Ryan Spann because I believe Nikita Krylov's got a better chin than Ryan Spann. So, where am I going to put him? I'm going to put him in the 0 to 15%. Because I think when he tries to shoot in on him, he will get caught with elbows. Like, look at that fight with Johnny Walker. Alex Pereira has actually rocked Yeri the way he got finished against. Johnny Walker with those elbows down, down, down. And Ryan Spann, sometimes he shoots for takedowns, but when he does the takedowns now, after watching the Anthony Smith fight, I was confused why he didn't land any ground and pound and just started hugging him. Yeah, he's got power and he's got a very good jab, but I think by Alex Pereira using the leg kicks, and I have to keep saying it because we all know that's his best attribute, and the way he doesn't telegraph them, he's gonna to struggle to land that jab because if you can't plant that front leg into the floor and use it to like throw your jab, where's the power gonna come from? It's not really gonna come from your back leg. So yeah, zero to 15. And here's the one which will trigger you the most, I think. Right, Jamal Hill. Where am I gonna put him? You're probably thinking 40 to 50, maybe 20 to 30. But in my opinion, He's going in top tier for me. And before you get aggressive and say, how the hell are you going to put him there? Oh, we beat an aging Glover. It doesn't matter. Okay, he was in a war with Yuri Prohaska, but look at how competitive it was in that fight. 
and look at how competitive it was in the fight of Glover Teixeira. And I know I might be doing a little bit of MMA math now and I shouldn't be, but the volume output from this guy is unbelievable. For a guy who actually looks kind of fat right now and when he's in cage, he's got a skinny, fat, unathletic body. He has got a good chance against Alex Pereira and I think a lot of people are underrating him because they're saying if he lands a leg kick, then how is he going to be able to use that like bounce into the punches and throw off that back leg like he likes to do throwing that like rear hand to then follow up with his lead hand he does that a lot he likes to throw with his rear hand before throwing with that lead hand but i think his bad matchup is probably magomed ankalaev and alex pereira does have a good chance but you've got to think jamal hill is a guy where he follows up with combinations his head movement's actually quite underrated like look at that one sequence with glover Teixeira. He doesn't get enough credit because you look at him and you don't think of him as a guy who can do a lot of these sneaky things, which he does. And he can throw like head kicks as well. I don't think he'll want to do that against Alex Pereira because of how like he arches his head backwards. If he throws a kick and then he misses that kick, it will put him in the perfect position to get countered with a hook. But what I think he can exploit on Alex Pereira is when he lands that one cross and I saw it against Yuri Prohaska, you can go back and look at the fight. When he landed it near the end of the combination, Alex Pereira is not really looking at him using a head movement. He's kind of turning away. And that is a bad thing to do when you come up against a guy like Jamal Hill. Because of the volume output, once he catches you with one punch, if you start turning away, it happened against Jan Blachowicz with Alex Pereira as well. He will follow up with multiple punches. And if you look at the gift there, that's probably how you're reacting when I'm putting him in top tier. But I just think because of the power threat of him, he's put on the weight now, and you could say he's coming off an injury, so we don't know how he can perform. Yeah, that is a worrying concern, but in my opinion, I don't think Jamal Hill gets the credit he deserves. And I think if he ends up fighting Alex Pereira, which probably will happen next, I don't think Alex Pereira will win that fight. I think it will be a fight where the first round, he might chew up the legs. But the second round, because Jamal Hill likes to apply pressure and he tries to get in your face and he doesn't have to worry about the grappling threat like he's had to worry about in like a few of his fights with the Thiago Santos, Glover Teixeira, that will make the fight even better for him. And because he's got like an unorthodox style, like rolling with the punches as well. You know what I said about the head movement? Very good rolling with the punches. And if Alex Pereira tries to exchange with him, he could get dropped by him. It could go either way. It's like a 50-50 in the exchanges because Alex Pereira's faster. He's got the better technique, but Jamal Hill's got that kind of like locker room swinging type of style where he can roll with the punches by kind of leaning back, arching his back, moving his head down low, and then exploding up using that fast twitch muscle fiber and then land that punch. And I think it will be a bit like the Adesanya fight where I can see Alex Pereira getting countered and getting knocked out cold when they're both exchanging because I do believe Jamal Hill is a very underrated chin. Like the punches he can take and then throw whilst taking like a lot of damaging strikes is very underrated. So I know you're going to hate this and you're going to disagree massively, but when the fight happens, I think he's going to be the guy to do it. So yeah, thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.